The indoor track and field season is just about to begin, so we continue our Yellow Jacket spotlight this afternoon with the leader of those two programs on both the men's and the women's side, Matthew Cole. A chance to get to know you, a chance to recap a couple of the hardware uh, yep. that we have behind us. I think uh, we'll have some fun this afternoon, and, and so let's start with a couple of trophies that uh, that are behind us. First year for you in the program last year, and you win a national championship. I don't know if you could have drawn it up any better. No. Um, to be honest with you, when I was uh, looking at this job, I uh, was given the the, the job at uh, St. Lawrence was the national meet when I was still up in, in Wisconsin coaching uh, my athletes up there. Um, was watching, kind of scouting a little bit, needless to say, and, and had a good conversation with Kevin Phipps at that time up at St. Lawrence. And I said, you know what, if we, if we do our jobs right, there's a chance we can, we can get a trophy next year. Um, come full circle a year later, uh, indoors, we're standing on the top, and they're, they're handing us the trophy, handing the ladies the trophy, and uh, it was pretty surreal. But uh, had some outstanding young women uh, that did some amazing things at the biggest stage that they possibly could. Um, had career bests, um, some of the best marks in Division Three history. So when whenever things like that come about, uh, good things are going to happen, and the ladies deserve uh, everything that they earn. There's no doubt about that. I don't mean to neglect the men for a moment, but because we're on this topic, I have to imagine that it's it's one of the peaks of your career, but was there a moment for you last year when it started to sink in what that team was about to accomplish? That's a tough question. Um, you know, going into the meet, if you go into the national meet and you want to compete at the highest level that you possibly can, right? Um, going into it, our goal was to make the finals um, in every event that we were in and score well, see where we can go. Um, after day one, I think we had 20 points. We were leading the competition. Um, I joked with a couple of people. I said, well, can we just end it now uh, and not come back and finish day two? And um, we, we came back day two uh, even, even stronger than day one. And I think it was halfway through the competition, uh, our distance coach, Joe Eby, was sick at home, uh, and he was constantly texting me updates of, Here's what needs to happen. Here's here's I mean he was play by play uh, forecasting the, the the upcoming events to see who could catch us, who could beat us, uh, so on and so forth. So um, that was about the moment where I'm thinking, okay, this this may happen. Uh, these ladies have, have done some amazing things, um, and and it was a it was a great time. It was a great event to share with everybody that were, was there in Grinnell, Iowa. Yeah, well, and, and it was uh, obviously one of the, the premier moments in Baldwin Wallace athletics history. National championships are not easy to come by in any sport, and so it should be celebrated uh, year after year. As you look forward to the 2017 season, which is about to get underway, let's start with this off season. What did winning that national championship do for you and your recruiting efforts? Uh, it definitely helped. It, there's there's no question. Um, track and field is a great sport, and, and and whenever you can bring a national championship home to to your program, uh, promote that and to show young men and women um, that it can be done at Baldwin Wallace is, is something special. And we continue to promote that, and it's something important uh, that we talk about to kids that you know. Uh, the ladies that came into this program were not superstars. They continually improved year after year after year, and when they were seniors, they got the job done. And that's something that, that, that we talk to our recruits about, that, hey, you may not be a superstar right now as a junior or senior in high school, but you come into our program, you follow our process, you get better year after year after year, and, and good things can happen, and, and, and those trophies um, are, are proof in the pudding there. You've essentially spent your entire life – around a track and, and in track programs because your father was a track coach, not just in this conference, but you've had a chance to be uh, you know, in several places throughout the country. Is there something specific about BW that, that makes this feel like home for you? Yeah, it's my childhood. Um, my father started his collegiate coaching career down in Muskingum College back in the day uh, in the 80s. Baldwin Wallace was one of the very few places that actually had an indoor track. Uh, every Friday night, Coach Taraski was hosting meets up here, and my father would get in a couple of 15-passenger uh, vans and drive his team up here, and we would tag along, and I would play in the hallways, and I, I joked on, during my interview that I probably know this building better than most people working here uh, because I've, I've been I spent so much time here as a as a young as a as a young boy. Um, but you know the 
Bald Wallace holds a special place in my heart. Um, I've always watched BW. My father's women have always tried to beat BW. Um, not that successfully. Um, but, uh, you know, BW is a special place. Cleveland is a special place uh, right now. And there, there's really no better place to be than, than in Berea, Ohio, at Bald Wallace, uh, 14 miles down the road from uh, downtown Cleveland, watching the Cavs and the Indians and, and, and everybody down there. So um, it's, a, it's a very special place, and I'm thankful to be here. Uh, it's an outstanding program, outstanding institution, uh, and one that uh, I look forward to uh, being at for a long time. As you look at what the 2017 season is about to uh, about to bring you, obviously the hopes are, you know, to continue to to win at a high level because that's now not just an expectation but it's a legitimate, tangible goal. Mm -hmm. But I know you know as well as anybody how hard it is to continue to to hit that level over and over again. When you set goals for the beginning of the season, is it based on the talent you think you have, or are you trying to push guys and girls? To, to achieve things that you know maybe they don't believe in at first? Um, I think it's both. Uh, we have three program goals. Uh, our first program goal is to win uh, the OAC indoor and outdoor title every year. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, the second one is to trophy at the uh, national championships. Top four teams earn a trophy. Uh, let's earn one of those. And then the third one is to represent um, our TFP program and, and one that's uh, uh, in great light. So, um, Yes, we, we have team goals um, that are to win the conference championship uh, that are based on the talent that we have, but also we are constantly pushing and encouraging uh, our young men and women to get better, uh, to hold themselves accountable, uh, to hold each other accountable, and, and, and do the little things that it takes to become a champion um, day in and day out. It just doesn't happen on a Saturday afternoon. It, it's, it happens Monday through Friday, uh, coming to practice every day, following the process, getting better week in and week out. So, um, yeah, we, we encourage our kids, uh, without a doubt, to win the conference championship. It's something that, that uh, I put a lot of stock in uh, personally. Uh, I put Our coaching staff puts a lot of stock into it, and that's something that, that our kids need to believe that, that they can win, uh, and we will win um, when our time is right. So. The OAC Championship Meet is being held at Baldwin Wallace this year on Friday, February 24th, and on Saturday, February 25th, but lots of races to run in the indoor season before that, and it starts this upcoming weekend at Ohio Northern, yeah. which might be a little bit of a, an odd homecoming for you, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I know you've spent an awful lot of time in Ada, yeah. but is it, is it kind of neat for you personally to, to bring your program to a place where you grew up? Yeah, yeah. Um... Last year, our first uh, indoor, our, my first coaching experience at Baldwin Wallace was at my alma mater, which was kind of strange. Um, year two, we're headed to Ohio Northern, where uh, I watched the King Horn Center go up in, in 1990, 1991 as a child, uh, with my dad being the head, first head, full time head track coach there at Ohio Northern. So, yeah, it, it it's a special place to me. Um, you know, it, it's it's some place that that I enjoy going. Uh, Jason Moss does a great job over there. They run a great meet, and uh, we look forward to opening up the seasons. Our kids our kids have had three weeks of of great training, so um, they're ready to uh, run against somebody else, so to speak. Um, we've had a couple of nice time trials, and we're we're getting prepared. Uh, but I really see us running well uh, mid February range. And uh, this will be the, the stepping stone to that as we progress towards the conference championship. How about for casual fans or, or BW alums that want to follow the program, a couple of names on both the men's and the women's side that you think that uh, fans might gravitate to this year? Yeah, um, you know, on, on the men's side, um, Jonathan Spilker is a senior, our, our only senior male, has a great shot to win the conference championship this year uh, in the pole vault. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple of folks uh, in the under ranks that, that people need to keep their eye on. Um, first one that kind of comes to my mind is Chris Hart, a talented young man out of uh, uh, Van Wert High School on the west side of the state. He uh, was a good sprinter in high school, and, and he's going to have a, a good career uh, here, and I think he's going to kind of blossom here this season. Um, Ted Akatis from um, Illyria Catholic, uh, battling a, a little bit of a back issue right now, but um, as he progresses through that uh, and gets better, he's going to be a guy that you want to keep your eye on uh, moving forward as well. Uh, on the women's side, Casey Klaus, um, she's our staple uh, in the ring uh, when it comes to our thrower ladies, and she's definitely going to uh, be a great leader for us this year as well. Uh, Lindsey Armstrong in the hurdles, we're expecting uh, great things out of her this year. 
Um, and then we have a, a, some talented freshmen that, that we're excited about uh, to watch them grow and develop as well. So um, great year for, for hopefully the, the Yellow Jackets and, and one that uh, needs to be led by our upperclassmen to, to kind of show our underclassmen what's expected and this is how we operate. Uh, and then continue to grow that, that as, we, as we move through the process here in the next couple of years. And then one more thing potentially here before we go for uh, potential BW athletes of the future that are going to come in here, whether they're recruits coming out of high school or um, you know, maybe someone who wants to transfer into BW, what would you tell a recruit about your program, something they can do right now to put themselves in a good spot so that they can compete here? Work hard. Um, you know, there's so many moving pieces to the recruiting process. Like we were talking off camera a few minutes ago, uh, we have a lot of dual sport athletes here at Baldwin Laws, uh, men and women that, that um, you know, play football. Um, we've had athletes that have played soccer and run track for us. Um, so so for, a, for a high school kid uh, wanting to reach out to BW, obviously contacting us um, if, you're, if you're interested in, in potentially coming to Baldwin Laws, first and foremost. Um, but we're, we're going after a lot of kids, and, and, and uh, you know, the recruiting process is a long and tiring one. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the more kids that we can get on campus and show them our program and, and, and talk about uh, what we value, what our vision is, uh, how we plan to execute that, um, and then, and then honestly, you know, Baldwin Wallace, the the education here is first class. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, you come to Baldwin Wallace to get a degree first. You're able to participate in track and field uh, during your four years here, and, and you're going to get a great job. That's that's the other thing about BW is uh, our students get great jobs and they go on and, and have successful careers. Um, but they learn a lot of life lessons, a lot of values in our program. Um, not only in track and field, but but in cross country, they learn a lot of values um, in, in both of those programs. So, um, reach out to us because we've probably already reached out to you, um, <laughs> and, and, and let's get that that relationship growing. Uh, you know, we're we're all about building lifelong relationships with our athletes and, and and having them come back as alumni and being still being a part of the program. And and we've tried to do a great job uh, in our short time here so far of reconnecting with those alumni. Uh, we have a great, we have an, we have an outstanding alumni base uh, in track and field and cross country here at Baldwin Walls. Uh, a lot of success here, great tradition, and, and so we're doing as much as we can to, to reach out and, and uh, bring them in and, and have them a part of our process too. So That's terrific. Congratulations on all the success so far. Can't wait to see what's in store for the Yellow Jackets Thanks. this year. Appreciate it. All right, head coach Matthew Cole of the men's and women's track and field teams here at Baldwin Wallace.